Hvor du bedre måtte snakke til Welcome, the senior lecturer Helle Jonsen from the Metropolitan University College in Copenhagen, who is going to do an next presentation about the my new pregnancy. Uh, we are very delighted that you will be here and do your presentation, and maybe uh, you could present yourself, Helle. You have the You have to turn on your microphone again, Helen. Is it on now? Uh, hello to all, and thank you for letting me uh, uh, speak uh, today. I'm delighted to share my experiences uh, with you. And we'll uh, be talking about innovative uh, student uh, learning, uh, and uh, more precisely, uh, I'm going to tell you about a project I'm I'm, I'm currently uh, doing uh, involving innovative student uh, learning. Uh, first, a little bit about uh, the program for this session. Uh, initially, I'm going to just talk a little bit about the uh, desk research we did uh, before we uh, uh, started this project. Uh, then I'll be talking about how. Uh, we uh, structured the whole innovation process with uh, regards uh, to the students and uh, what kind of theoretical model we used to, uh, to structure the process. And uh, going on from that, uh, I will also talk about the uh, results uh, of, uh, of the evaluation of the student learning. And finally, I'll uh, be happy uh, to take any kind of questions uh, you have with regards to the session. Now, uh, before we uh, started this uh, project, we actually uh, went out and had a look at uh, what do we already know about client expectations in antenatal care. So we had uh, a look at the uh, different uh, publications on uh, on this particular uh, subject. We knew we wanted uh, to do uh, a project that had to do with uh, with antenatal checkups, but we needed to be more focused about how how uh, what kind of project would actually make sense. I'm just going to interrupt you for a second. There's some people um, having problems with the broadband, and therefore I think it's, it's better that we go off webcam and I'll put uh, a photo of you instead. Will that be okay? Okay. Okay. Uh, now, uh, what we found out is that when the women attend uh, their antenatal uh, checkups, it's quite important for them to know uh, that the purpose of, of seeing a midwife, and seeing as, uh, as they actually uh, see uh, the midwife several times, it's also important. Uh, for for them to know the the differences in between the uh, antenatal checkups and the differences between sort of the start of pregnancy, uh, midway pregnancy, and the end of of, of pregnancy. So although it's for us uh, as professionals can be quite clear uh, why we're seeing the women, it would appear that it's not necessarily as clear for the women themselves. Uh, we could also see from the uh, publications that it was quite important for women uh, 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 to, to receive care that was tailored to their individual needs. And, and uh, quite a few studies, you, you heard women talking about not wanting to be an obstetric case, uh, not wanting to be a number, not wanting to be a, a womb, but, but wanting to be a person and, and being met as, as a person. And, and tailored care also had to do with, uh, you know, when they received information from the midwife, it was quite important, it was relevant to them and, and the kind of life they were, were living. Uh, we could also see that uh, they, the women seemed keen in, in, in making their own decisions, but they needed the midwife to support, to support them in decision making, hence that they were from the midwife provided with knowledge that was actually relevant for them when they uh, had to, to make uh, decisions. And then we could see that reassurance was a, a major part of, of seeing a midwife as well. Um, uh, reassurance with uh, with regards to that sort of many of, of the thoughts you have, perhaps uh, uh, worries about being pregnant or future family life, was actually a quite normal part of, of being pregnant. 
Uh, now, um, several studies were, were done where they actually focused on, on, on being healthy uh, during the, the, the pregnancy. And what we could see here was that the women were asking uh, uh, for, 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 for knowledge that was evidence-based, and not just evidence-based, but also knowledge that was current, because uh, uh, you know there's there is an ongoing production of knowledge with with regards to health and and pregnancy. We could also see that you know. Uh, uh, knowledge on, on healthy living during uh, pregnancy was was partially uh, based on facts and partially based on myths, and and they were looking to the midwives to sort of distinguish what was actually factual, and what was more uh, a myth, and 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 to that extent not factual. Uh, now, uh, a major finding when we looked at the publications was that uh, the women uh, were, were looking for time when they saw the midwife, and, and time was actually related to, to several issues. Uh, it had to do with uh, time to, to um, be examined. It had to do with time to talk about the examinations. What were the examinations about? What was the purpose of the examinations? It had to do with the uh, uh, time uh, to talk about, uh, for example, uh, test results and understanding why the tests were taken. It had to do with time to talk about more sort of mental and social issues of, of being uh, pregnant. And it was also apparent that when the women felt that there weren't enough time at the antenatal checkups uh, to ask uh, uh, the midwife, sometimes they would actually choose not to ask because the midwife uh, seemed too busy with all the tasks she, she had when she saw the woman. Uh, and finally, um, you know, some of the aspects that could be neglected at the antenatal checkups was, you know, the more mental and social parts of receiving counseling and, and emotional support. Um, it was also quite clear that, you know, women attending antenatal checkups do not only uh, uh, search for, for information uh, by meeting the professionals, that they had uh, many different spheres where they searched information. And, and a major change over time was that the women were increasingly looking for information on the internet. And, and when they had been to an antenatal checkup and perhaps not felt that uh, they'd received the knowledge they needed, they actually went on the internet instead and, and searched for information there. Uh, they also used uh, the internet uh, to share uh, their own experiences uh, and to read about others uh, and their experiences and to, to, to get advice from other pregnant women uh, and also to give advice to, to other pregnant women. So uh, when we uh, started uh, this project, we, we uh, had a vision. Uh, we had a vision that we were going to, to see if we some way could develop a solution that could create more time in antenatal care. And when we talk about more quality time in antenatal care, we meant that uh, if we perhaps uh, uh, could take some of the tasks that were ordinarily a part of the antenatal checkup out, we could actually create space for, for the more uh, social and mental, mental issues of, of being pregnant. Now, now my e-pregnancy is actually a, a, an innovational project done in a partnership where uh, the partnership uh, uh, consists of, of uh, us uh, joining up with a, a major regional hospital and, and they have a, a, a clinical project aim on um, on uh, uh, doing this project, while as we, uh, the Metropolitan University College, have a more educational aim for participating. Now, uh, what we're trying to create is a new tablet solution uh, where the uh, pregnant women are supplied with a tablet. And this tablet uh, uh, will enable the women to upload monitoring before seeing the midwife. And that could be, example, uploading uh, their weight before they see the midwife. It will also enable them to pre-register information because we found that uh, uh, quite a bit of time was actually spent during the antenatal checkup doing paperwork. And, and if they could do that in advance, we could actually free time to talk. And it would also enable the women to actually meet with the, the midwife over the, the web should they uh, wish uh, to do so. 
Now, with regards to us as an educational institution going into this project, we were more focused on, 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 on learning. Uh, and uh, our task in this project would be to uh, create different elements for this uh, web portal, uh, elements consisting of uh, e-learning programs and uh, reliable information, as we would uh, call it, which would be uh, uh, both uh, evidence-based but also experience-based if it were in areas that uh, were not uh, researched. Uh, so our educational project aim for being part of this project would actually uh, be uh, uh, to see um, are we able to strengthen the students' innovative and IT competences through new ways of learning. And uh, it was quite important for us when we were talking innovation that they would actually have a chance to experiment while taking part in, in, in this uh, project. And, and, and once we had made uh, this portal, it was important that we could also measure effect of the portal and sort of that, that practice the hospital would learn by this effect measuring, but also, you know, the educational institution would gain important knowledge about the, how, how the portal is used and, and how uh, we can use this knowledge when we're educating our bachelor students. Uh, so, uh, just a little bit about uh, what innovation is and, 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 you know, when you talk about innovational learning, what's that all about? Uh, now, if we start with uh, innovation, uh, innovation uh, can be described as a controlled creative process. Now, it's very important that you work with creativity when you work uh, with innovation, but you also need a structured process in order to actually get to the, to the end of the process. It has to create value, and, 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 and more than just creating value, it has to be useful. It has to be, you have to be able to put it to actual use, uh, and, and, and it not just you know, ending at being a very good idea. Now, when you talk about uh, innovative uh, learning, you could uh, describe it as what you would call uh, mode two uh, learning. And uh, mode two learning has to do with learning by being challenged and, and by solving uh, problems. And it's actually, you could say, learning by doing. So, so you're learning through experiencing and discovering. And it's quite important that when we say that these projects have to be practice oriented, that they actually take they take part in real life. So, so we're actually creating something that will be put to use in in uh, in practice. And it's also very important that when the students join up for a project uh, like this, that uh, uh, we 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 set a specific task for them. It has to be quite clear what is their role when, when they join a, a project like this. Now, just uh, going back, I can see I'm having a little bit of uh, problems with the uh, taxonomy and, and the picture actually showing up on the screen. So I think I'll just explain to you what, when you talk about innovation and, and taxonomy instead. Uh, you could say at one end of the spectrum, uh, you are talking about incremental innovation, or you're talking about um, smaller kinds of innovations that would uh, in, in improve the way we're living our lives. That could be, for example, that when you're looking at uh, uh, creating new shoes, you've actually learned that if you put gel into the sole of the shoes, that will, uh, that will help when you walk and protect your knees. You're also talking at the other end of this taxonomy about radical uh, innovation. And radical innovation would be uh, major innovations that uh, change the, the, the lives of, of many. And an example of radical uh, uh, innovation would uh, be, for example, when, when we got the internet and started using that as a, as a social media. Now, uh, just uh, a little bit about uh, um, the, the project in numbers. Uh, now, we're a, a large educational institution, and uh, we decided to do this uh, uh, with more than just midwifery students. And the whole idea was that you know we had other bachelor degrees, and that if we said uh, one plus one plus one, it would actually at the end equal five 
because uh, uh, the different bachelor programs uh, have uh, different kinds of expertise and, and that this kind of expertise would actually be useful for, for, for the pregnant women. Uh, uh, for example, the physiotherapists, they know a lot about movement and nutrition and health, have specialized knowledge with regards to, to dieting. So we invited uh, two other bachelor programs uh, to join and, and they were happy to do so. Uh, we had six mentors uh, following the students and this was really important that we made sure that the students had you know, a contact person somewhere uh, to go um, uh, while they were working. Um, we had uh, 70 students um, uh, finishing uh, uh, the project. Uh, and uh, when they joined the project, they were actually asked to pick a theme. And we uh, had made four themes that were actually created on behalf of our desk research that we felt were relevant for them to produce portal material uh, within. And those four themes were lifestyle, antenatal preparation, uh, family life, and, uh, and the newborn. We had uh, 18 groups working. Some of them were consisting of students within the same bachelor program. And some of them were consisting of students across uh, two bachelor uh, programs. Uh, and then we were uh, quite interested to see, because we were setting, you know, we're expecting them to, 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 to deliver at the end. So we were interested to see how many dropouts are we actually going to get when we demand a lot of work from them. And, and uh, the dropouts were six students in all. And uh, they all dropped out at the beginning of the project. And the reason being that they didn't felt they had enough time to participate in the uh, project. Now, when we evaluated uh, their learning, we did it in, in several different ways. Uh, we had uh, questionnaires that actually followed uh, the different parts of the innovation process. Uh, we had the students interviewing each other, of course, one aim being that we would uh, learn from these interviews, but another aim was for the students to share experiences with each other. And then uh, when the students had actually uh, made their projects, we did uh, focus group uh, interviews uh, as well. And the response rate and all this uh, being, uh, being uh, quite high, which was good with regards to, to, to learning as an educational institution of how to do this. Uh, now, um, when, uh, when we work on again here, I can see there's a slight problem with the showing the picture as it's supposed to be shown. Uh, we actually sort of made um, a model for evaluating what the uh, uh, students were uh, supposed to uh, learn. And uh, for that, we took an offset in what's called program theory. Now, uh, program theory uh, has to do with evaluating learning as a process. And in, in program theory, you focus on a, like a tune of effect, and, and you look at the different parts of the tune. So we uh, set up uh, different uh, uh, goals for the different phases of the project. And uh, then we uh, uh, did our questionnaires and so forth to uncover whether the students had received the competences we were hoping that they would uh, get in the, in the different parts of the program. Um, and uh, when you do it as a process as well, you're also uh, able to see if, you know, when particular problems arise, you're able to see if it actually has uh, some kind of consequence for the next part of, of, of the learning uh, process. Uh, before we started, uh, we actually asked the students why they decided to join up because joining was, uh, you know, voluntarily. Uh, we did uh, different kinds of recruitment meetings, but at the end of the day, it, it was the students uh, deciding uh, whether um, um, they wanted to join the project. Uh, so we asked them, why, why have you joined? And what they said was they thought it was exciting to work with innovation, that you know, learning to do something in a new way was exciting for them. Uh, being able to work with creativity was also attractive uh, to the students because uh, they were not that used to, in their ordinary bachelor program, to work with creativity. So, so uh, that enhanced uh, their motivation to, to join. 
And also, you know, the student said, you know, they wanted to, to be part of a, of a community, and being part of a community related to both uh, being part of a group and, and producing a product with that group, but also being part of one group amongst many groups, and that we were all a community together, and that we had the partnership with the hospital. That was a major motivation for, for, for joining. Now, uh, we uh, decided uh, to use the Danish uh, innovation model to, to structure their learning process. And, and this uh, model, the CIE model translated into English, uh, is all about working in three different innovation rooms. Uh, and um, the uh, uh, first room being working in the creative uh, uh, room. Uh, and the next, the innovative room, and the final, the entrepreneurial room. And I'll go on in a moment to explain to you uh, how you work uh, in, in, in the different uh, rooms. Uh, we also uh, set up uh, uh, some gates along the way. Uh, first of all, before they started the, the process, we taught them how to work with the creativity in a uh, kickoff uh, workshop. When they worked uh, with innovation and had picked the idea they were going to turn into a project, we actually had them uh, present the idea to the hospital, and we had them uh, present the idea to uh, the computer programmers uh, with regards to technical support. And uh, before uh, uh, they um, handed in their projects, they actually presented uh, their project a final time to the uh, a panel consistent, uh, or consisting uh, of, uh, of uh, managers and, uh, and midwives uh, from, from the hospital. Now, if we start by having a look at uh, the first room, uh, you're in the creative room, and creative uh, or creativity has to do with uh, divergent thinking. Now, divergent thinking relates to thinking uh, in many different uh, uh, ways, um, and uh, is the opposite of convergent thinking that we'll uh, uh, get back to in the next uh, room. And the idea when you work with creativity uh, is uh, that um, you um, are supposed to produce a multitude of ideas, as, ma as many as possible, several hundred if you can. And um, the idea is also that, uh, that you uh, view uh, ideas from many different perspectives, so you're not limited to one perspective. Uh, and you're allowed to suggest any idea that uh, comes to mind. So uh, an important social aspect of uh, working in the creative room was to tell the students that uh, no is not allowed. So they weren't allowed to say to each other, I don't think that's a good idea. We've tried that. That didn't work, and so forth. Uh, at this point, it was yes, anything uh, goes. Uh, so we were interested with regards to, to the learning because uh, the competence at this point that they, uh, uh, we were looking uh, uh, for them to, to have was actually uh, to, to, uh, to work creatively with, uh, with uh, ideas. And uh, we were asking them, so what kind of ideas did you pick? And they were saying to us, well, we, we picked uh, uh, new ideas. Uh, and by new ideas, they meant ideas that they didn't know existed previously. Uh, they also had, uh, uh, had a look at practice and, and looked at what do we already have, but with regards to innovation, could do a lot better. And then uh, they um, uh, uh, work with problem solving uh, ideas, you know, meeting specific needs by creating this particular idea. And what was quite apparent and, and quite a, a surprise was that already at this point, although they were not supposed to be focused at being realistic, that concept in the last room they're working in, then uh, they were, they were uh, trying to create ideas that they knew could actually be, be turned into uh, a product. Now, um, the next room the uh, students uh, entered was uh, the uh, innovative room. And uh, when they worked in the innovative uh, room, uh, the major criteria was that they had to work with an offset in value. 
and more specifically in, in user value. You know, whatever they created primarily had to have value for the women in antenatal care. Uh, but value was being uh, understood in a, in a wide manner. It could be uh, advice on 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 how to to do healthy cooking. It could be advice on 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 how to deal with a new child and siblings and so forth. Value had had many different uh, aspects. Uh, and at this point, with regards to evaluating their learning, we were looking at competence to choose the final idea. And more specifically, we were, use, uh, we were looking at their arguments for choosing that particular idea over other possible ideas. And we were also encouraging the students to refine the idea once they picked the idea they wanted to work out with. And quite a few of the products that we ended up with in the end was actually the uh, combination of, of maybe uh, parts of three or four students' ideas. So they actually combined ideas in order to make a better idea uh, in the end. Now, at this point, uh, we wanted uh, to look at competence to select the final idea. And uh, we were asking the students, what kind of uh, methods did you use when, when you did that? And they'd used, actually, a wide variety of, of methods uh, to do so. Uh, some uh, uh, students had uh, made questionnaires uh, that they had to actually put out in the antenatal uh, centers and had uh, women uh, fill in there. Some uh, students had done qualitative interviews uh, with uh, pregnant women. Some students had uh, turned uh, to experts and done interviews with them. Uh, some students had uh, looked at uh, previous publications on that particular theme. Uh, some students had gone into web forums and, and actually asked the women in there. And uh, we were quite strict with uh, asking the students to identify themselves if they were in web forums, and also telling the women what their purpose was for, for, for being there. And finally, um, you know, with regards to being experience-based, uh, the students were also uh, drawing on own uh, life experience when, uh, when they were um, looking at, at uh, um, what user value actually was. Now, uh, the last room the students worked in was the entrepreneurial room. And this is probably the most challenging room out of the three. Uh, when we did the focus group interviews, uh, the students said you know, they, they, they had been worried whether they would actually be able to be uh, creative, but found that even though you're an adult, being creative is actually no problem at all. Uh, um, and working with user uh, value had actually gone OK. But now, at this point, they actually had to make uh, a product. And uh, at this uh, point, we were asking them to make a plan of, of how you know they would make the product. We're also asking the students to be pragmatic, because we were demanding, actually, to see a product at the end. Uh, and uh, so the competence here would be, are they actually able to operationalize their, their idea into a, a product? And uh, looking at the, the products we received from the uh, students, um, we actually received uh, many different kinds of, of, of products. Uh, some groups had uh, worked with uh, user-relevant texts. Uh, for, this could be, for example, text on, on breastfeeding uh, that would be put into the uh, portal. And um, the idea here was it wasn't just text in, in the sort of more academical understanding of, of writing. Here we were challenging them. And we were asking them to, to produce a product that was actually uh, um, able to go on the web, which means it has to be a lot shorter, it has to be a lot uh, focused. So you know, new demands were, were set to the students with regards to producing these texts. Uh, some students uh, had uh, texts about advice or perhaps uh, different kinds of, of guides. Uh, a guide could be how to control cravings uh, during pregnancy with regards to, to eating the right things. Some students had worked cre very creative with uh, producing either tests or quizzes where rather than having a text that could be read, now they had to test their own uh, knowledge by, by doing a quiz. Uh, we had several different films made, some animations, uh, some um, 
for example, interview or whiteboard film, so, so different forms of films. And we also had uh, quite a few different exercise uh, programs that the uh, students uh, produced for the uh, portal. Now, when we saw the students uh, um, at the end, uh, when they'd handed in their project and we asked them to participate in focus group interviews, we asked them uh, what it meant for them to, to have a mentor by the side and uh, ideally what kind of uh, personal competence should the, the mentor have uh, to take part uh, in a, an, an innovational project. And what the students said was that it was really important for them that their mentor uh, would motivate them and encourage them and say, you know, well done and uh, you've obviously worked really hard. But also that the mentor would be a kind of devil's advocate and uh, that uh, the, the, the mentor would challenge their ideas and challenge their pro uh, products in order to make them uh, even better. It was important for the students that uh, um, that the, 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 the mentor had, first of all, knowledge about uh, uh, the different uh, innovational rooms they were working in, uh, but also the overall project aim, uh, because they were so busy uh, producing that they uh, needed someone else uh, to take care of, of that part of, of the project. And uh, finally, they were looking to their mentors as, as a sort of experts, as, as someone who, who knew more uh, than them. Now, um, we also asked them, now as a student, when you've taken part in an innovation project, what, 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 what do you learn? What kind of competences do you uh, get from taking part in a project like this? And uh, one, of the, one of the things quite a few students uh, pointed uh, at was that they had learned to be bold. And, and being bold uh, related uh, to, um, they would use uh, metaphors like, uh, I felt like I'd been thrown out of a plane without a parachute, or I was at uh, sea without a life vest, that, you know, working in the beginning of the process, uh, to create ideas without boundaries was actually quite different than the more structured learning they were used to uh, have when they did their uh, bachelor education. So this was uh, this was uh, this was new, uh, slightly intimidating for them, but also very exciting. Now uh, another thing they pointed towards was that if you take part in a project like this, you have to prepare, be prepared to work hard. Uh, this takes a lot of hours. Uh, and you have to be willing to put in the hours in order to, to produce a product. Then they said, it's really a, a matter of being creative on the one side, but also being compliant with the innovational model on the other side. So they said, you know, you have to accept that this, you know, during this project we're using this particular model, and this is not up for discussion. Uh, we will work in, in the rooms as we're supposed to, and we will follow uh, the model. Uh, and um, that was new for them as well, to combine creativity and structure uh, in, a, in a new manner. Then uh, they said, uh, well, you learn that you get frustrated. And frustration had primarily to do uh, with, with their work in the entrepreneurial room because at this point we're asking them to be pragmatic. And uh, um, a lot of uh, the groups had ideas that were technically uh, too complex uh, to, to carry into real life or perhaps too expensive. And at this point, they more or less uh, sometimes had to, 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 to downsize their product in order uh, for it to, to fit uh, with the, the portal. Uh, now, the fact that uh, the portal products would actually become part uh, of, of real life was very motivating for them and at the same time frustrating because, you know, there were certain limitations that the students had to meet. A final thing uh, the students said was that uh, when you work in a group, you're challenging your social skills and you're actually challenging them in, challenging them in slightly different ways that uh, that were familiar uh, to them and uh, what they said was that uh, because we, we had deadlines that we had to meet, 
we uh, we needed uh, to be responsible uh, to each other. We also uh, needed to be very uh, respectful because uh, this openness, anything uh, goes, uh, uh, meant that it wasn't necessarily the idea that you had thought of that would turn into the project, but it was a combination of several different ideas, and that challenged uh, the, the students in, with regards to being able to, to compromise. And they also said that because they were so motivated uh, to, to, to be part of something that would uh, uh, be part of, 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 uh, of real life antenatal care, uh, they were actually very motivated uh, to participate as, as much as, as possible. But at the same time, they had to allow uh, space for, for, for the other students uh, who were in the, the group. Now, um, finally, uh, we were quite interested uh, to see, uh, with regards to the learning, uh, to learn a little bit more about uh, transfer. Now, uh, transfer, uh, you could say, takes place when, uh, when you know what you've learned, the knowledge and skills you've learned in in one situation uh, can be applied in a in a similar uh, situation. Uh, now, theoretically, you actually um, distinguish between uh, what you call near transfer and what you call uh, uh, far uh, transfer. Uh, and, and, and near transfer being when the similarity between the learning situation and the situation where the learning is applied is very similar. And far transfer being uh, when, where, you know, the, when the learning is applied, it actually differs uh, substantially for, from the learning situation. Now, uh, we were quite aware that, you know, the, the transfer we were trying to promote would be probably termed as being far transfer. And, and, and that was because, you know, none of the students actually had innovative experience uh, in advance. And none of the students uh, had experience with uh, producing web products. Uh, and the challenge with far uh, transfer is actually it, it's more difficult than, than near transfer. And, and the advantage of, of far transfer is that uh, the, uh, the students uh, learn to adapt to uh, new situations, which is an important competence to have when they finish their education as well. So uh, we asked uh, the uh, uh, students, um, if you had a look at what uh, kind of competence you had before entering the project and how you actually uh, used them in the innovation project, what did you take from education into the project? And uh, the students uh, told us that, uh, you know, various forms of form formal knowledge, for example, could be uh, knowledge uh, about psychology, could be uh, knowledge about physiology, uh, they would uh, bring into the project. They weren't starting from, from, from scratch, they actually had knowledge to bring into the project. Uh, our students also said, and that was primarily the midwifery students, that the knowledge they had from already taking practice placements during their education proved to be very useful. In, 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 in the project because they had uh, already been out uh, in antenatal care, so they knew about it and they knew about the women in advance. Then, uh, of course, we're also interested in, in, in knowing more about uh, the innovation project. What could you take back into the education? And, and what the students said was that because they'd worked within a specific scene, they had uh, actually achieved uh, very specialized bodies of knowledge that they would be able uh, to use in, 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 in their education. And they'd also uh, gained competence to do research, and research, you know, being widely described uh, when they were working with user value, uh, trying to gain knowledge in, in many, many different ways. Uh, and I think the major finding with regards to transfer was actually that they found that taking part in this project was that this would uh, make them think differently about being in practice in the future. Now, uh, one of the major findings was that uh, the students would come and say, uh, as professionals, we have conceptions about uh, what the uh, clients need to know and what kind of needs they actually have. 
And by working with user value, they would uh, sometimes discover that there would be a dissonance between what they assumed was needed to know and what the women actually needed to know. And that was kind of an epiphany for them. And uh, that uh, meant that they said in the future they would be a lot more aware of how they actually communicated uh, with the women in order to find out what they uh, needed. And of course, you know, when you work uh, many different uh, 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 people together and three different bachelor programs, you also learn something about interdisciplinary uh, cooperation and, and how different bodies of knowledge from different bachelor programs uh, can supply each other and, and all in all uh, produce a, a better product. Uh, and finally, the students said that uh, their idea of, of taking part in the project was actually something that was more targeted at the ex experienced employee. So now that they tried it already uh, during their education, they were actually more bold to, 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 to join a project soon after they finished their education, which was uh, a major uh, result as well. Now, next step uh, here will be that we are actually uh, going to test uh, the portal, and we'll be doing that this uh, autumn. And um, we'll be uh, testing it uh, different ways. Uh, we'll be doing questionnaires uh, where we have a, a, an intervention group and a control group, control group following antenatal checkups as they are now, an intervention group actually using the, the tablet and the uh, web portal. And uh, what we're interested uh, to learn is that when they have the opportunity f to use this uh, uh, tablet, do they uh, actually use it? And you know, uh, the different uh, uh, portal content, uh, do they find it usable? Uh, so we're asking them actually to assess uh, from a client perspective the quality of the portal uh, content. And now we're going to have a look to see if, if the tablet uh, increases uh, client satisfaction, which is obviously why we have a, a control group to, to compare with. And we're also interested to find out, you know, number of hits on, on the different uh, themes because that's important learning for us uh, in, in the education to find out whether they target the certain uh, themes more than other themes. It's interesting when they target them a lot, but it's also really interesting learning if, if they, for some reason, don't take an interest in, in a particular theme uh, in the portal. Well, I think that's all I have uh, to say, uh, and uh, be happy to let Anita take over at this point. Thank you very much, Hilly, for a very interesting presentation. Um, is there any questions? Um, please write them in the chat box. Um, or you could also have the, the, the possibility of turning on your microphone if you want to ask Hilly directly. But maybe I could start to put a question, Heather. Um, this project has uh, been very much, uh, much uh, encouraging, and uh, the students to be involved. Could you uh, say something about the process? How you uh, managed to get the students involved in the, in the project, and and, uh, and how they uh, work with it? You have said something about it during the presentation, but that that uh, is something. Uh, very important in this project. Um, well, um, as I said, we uh, initially uh, held uh, different uh, recruit meetings uh, for the students. And to be honest, uh, we had thought that uh, recruiting students would actually uh, not uh, be a problem, but it actually in the beginning was a problem. We had uh, some students signing up, but we, because we were worried about the dropout rate, we felt we needed more students. 
So, so we 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 kept on uh, um, having different sort of ways of recruiting. We also went on uh, used the student council and went on uh, on Facebook. We sent out emails uh, to all the students, and then sort of within a few weeks, uh, it, it, the tables had turned. It was like a snowball effect from from having maybe ten people signed up. All of a sudden, we have we had in the seventies signing up. And it would seem that when they're not, you know, when the students talk to each other about uh, participating, they would, uh, they would, uh, that would actually motivate them for for joining up in 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 the project rather than us uh, trying to encourage them to 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 join. So definitely, um, uh, communication between the students seemed to 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 motivate them to uh, to join up. Um, I've actually I have a, a question uh, here. Uh, uh, actually, I have several questions. I'll try and, and have a look at them. Um, I've been asked if the project is, is finished. Uh, the project is not finished at the moment. Uh, we're working with uh, uh, sort of uh, getting the different portal products put into one uh, web uh, solution. And then it will be uh, tested uh, this autumn. And actually, we have a test period that runs to more or less April, May, uh, 2014. And it won't be after that that we have, uh, you know, all the measurings of uh, of effect. Uh, then uh, I've been asked about uh, funding. Uh, now uh, the 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 project's been funded sort of internally within the our educational institution with uh, funding to, to do uh, development projects. And that's funded sort of uh, pay for mentors and, and for me as a project manager and so forth. Uh, and uh, the hospital has actually received a larger amount uh, from a welfare technology fund. And uh, it's through this funding that we're actually paying for the technical solution, which is, is, is quite uh, pricey. So you would obviously need some kind of external funding uh, to do that. Um, and uh, then I've been asked if, if the portal is, is uh, available online at, uh, at, at the moment. Uh, and it's, it's, it won't be uh, allowed at the moment because we're going into testing. And because uh, we have the test period uh, where we have an intervention group and a control group, it won't be able uh, to be open uh, to the public at this particular point. But after the test period is finished, the whole idea is that the portal will actually be, be open to, the, to, to all the public for whoever would have uh, interest in, in, in using it. Okay. Are there any uh, last questions? Because we're going to end this session in a few minutes. So uh, feel free to ask a uh, last question. It seems that there's not the most uh, comments coming up. Uh, at yes. So, so I think that we would uh, we would uh, say say th thank you very much, Helen, for a very interesting presentation and a very uh, nice debate here afterwards. And uh, um, thank you very much, and have a nice day. And then um, the the video presentation will be on the website uh, uh, afterwards.